Hey guys, it's David from mdbootstrap.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add the newest Bootstrap 5 uh, to your ASP.NET MVC app. So in the other video on our channel, I showed how to uh, add Bootstrap 5 or actually how to replace Bootstrap 4 with Bootstrap 5 uh, for a web app. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do it for MVC, which stands for which stands obviously for model view controller uh, web app mm, in .NET uh, Core. So without further ado, let's get started. So in order to start our journey with uh, .NET, obviously we have to download it first. As you might know, .NET is multi-platform, mm, so you can download it for uh, either Windows, Linux, Mac OS, um, or there is also Docker instance available. I'm going to use Windows yeah, as for today, so please download mm, the newest version as for today. This is the .NET 5.0. Uh, while you will be watching this video in the future, there might be a newer version, so please download the newest version at the moment you are watching this video and please download the SDK. I already did it. Um, you can check the installation process on the previous video. Uh, there is nothing um, difficult obviously over there. He simply hit download. It should start automatically. Uh, if not, click um, hit this download button and simply uh, click on the installer that will gonna get you through the installation process. Now, once you install SDK, it's time to open a command line and uh, navigate to the location of your choice. So I'll go to my .NET folder and now we gonna generate a new .NET MVC project. So I'm gonna type .NET um, oh, by the way, if you type .NET, you should see something like this. Similar info, that means that your .NET has been successfully installed. So this is how you verify that your .NET is installed correctly. Uh, and now let's generate some new applications. So I'm going to type .NET uh, new MVC uh, minus O and MVC movie. Now, in the previous uh, video, I showed you how to generate a project uh, without CSS certificates. Um, so we could skip them um, uh, for the sake of this tutorial. Um, you can see how to do it in the previous, uh, previous, previous video. Uh, but this time I'm going to show you the other way how to work with this. Uh, what is it about? I mean, basically when you create this app, it's going to uh, generate the certificate. However, the certificate is obviously auto generated by us. So it's not going to be accepted by uh, other users. So uh, I'm going to show you how to accept um, this certificate so you could use it locally. So I will just stop here. I'm going to fix my typo.net and I'm going to hit enter, which is going to create a new application for me. So this was, this has been, um, this has been created. So now let's navigate to our uh, MVC project. And now let's open this in Visual Studio code. So this is our project. Here we have our controllers, models and everything which we need for the MVC app. Um, we also have our views over here and few more configuration files. Now let's start, uh, let's try to run this app. So dot net run. It's going to build our application. So we're going to see new files over here. Let's wait for it a couple of seconds. And we are getting some error. Let's see. Unable to configure HTTPS endpoint. No server certificate was specified. And this is exactly what I was talking about. So now in order to uh, solve this issue, this is because um, this server from the application isn't um, trusted on our computer, we're going to type following command .NET def dash search https minus minus or dash dash trust this is gonna open okay again let me fix this typo.net 
Now, this is going to show me this common prompt. And as you can read here, trusting the HTTPS development certificate was requested. The confirmation prompt will be displayed if the certification was not previously trusted. Click yes on the prompt to trust the certificate. So I'm going to trust this certificate. And now if I'm going to try to run this command again, I'm going to get the information that the valid HTTP certificate is already present because we just added this to our certificate um store on our computer so now let's try our try to run our application it's gonna build it again it's gonna start it so let's do it here and now let's open this in web browser so this is our starting application so this is how it looks like and now as you can see it already um has some styles and if we check our network tab and refresh the page, we're going to see that we have jQuery Bootstrap already loaded uh, both for JavaScript and CSS. And this is because um, it uh, this web app automatically comes with Bootstrap 4, but we don't want to use Bootstrap 4. Obviously, we are here to use Bootstrap 5. So let's get Bootstrap 5. Let's download it so we can just search for it. Bootstrap 5 um, and you can get there uh to from get bootstrap or you can download this from our mdbootstrap.com page so if you go to mdbootstrap.com slash uh, bootstrap-5 you're gonna find a newest and direct link to the bootstrap 5. i'm gonna download it i'm gonna quickly unzip it uh, give me a second to do so so uh, this is c so this is my download folder i'm gonna extract it and now we have Bootstrap here. And let's navigate to the project folder over here. So it's working, .NET, MVC movie. And now what we have here, what we are looking for is www root. And you're going to see uh, CSS and JS folder. So this is the place where we store, where we are storing our custom styles for our application. So this is where you usually write your own CSS and JavaScript, but we also have a lib directory and this is a place where Bootstrap is stored. What we also going to find here is jQuery and jQuery validation. And this is because Razor, uh, which is used along with our application, utilize that. Uh, obviously, Bootstrap 4 also require jQuery, uh, but and this is one of the biggest updates in Bootstrap 5. We don't need this anymore. So technically we could get rid of jQuery, but as I said, Razor is using this, so I'm gonna leave it aside. What we're gonna do instead, I'm gonna just replace this Bootstrap files with Bootstrap 5. What we could do, um, what we could do as well, we could create a new folder here and call it, let's say, Bootstrap 5. Uh, so we could maintain both versions. So Bootstrap 4, and a bootstrap 5 but uh, obviously that doesn't make much sense uh, perhaps for some development purpose or if you already have your application based on bootstrap 4 and you want to migrate that makes some sense some sense to keep it separately and then uh, use both uh, while you are migrating your application uh, since we are starting new application we're just gonna start with you know, we're just gonna replace it totally so i'm gonna go to css so these are the bootstrap css files and I'm going to just replace them with Bootstrap 5. So I'm removing old Bootstrap 4 files and I'm just copying Bootstrap 5 over here. And then again, obviously, usually it doesn't make sense to load all of the um, assets over here as you are using a mostly minified version. But in case you are doing development, maybe perhaps you are doing some RTL um, or you want to customize it uh, somehow, you might need one of these files or you don't want to load entire bootstrap. You want to load just, for example, a grid or utilities. So this makes sense. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to copy all of the files, but keep in, please keep in mind, this is a good practice to get rid of uh, remaining files, unused files, and don't keep unnecessary files within your project. The same goes for JavaScript. I'm going to get rid of Bootstrap for JavaScript. I'm going to copy Bootstrap 5, and that's what comes here. And now um, let's restart. Or actually, before we start, let's have a look at our shared view as we're going to see this uh, where we are loading bootstrap so we are loading bootstrap in these views layout um, css cs html xp file and here we have our css and the jquery and the bootstrap files so 
yeah so uh, we don't gonna change the name because name remains the same hopefully let's check whether this working fine so let's refresh uh, let's restart our server let's restart it rebuild it and let's have a look whether it's working fine yeah so uh server has been restarted we just restarted um re refreshed our page and we can see J js and css loaded successfully so now let's let's use some component so i'm gonna use models so let's go for model where is it model over here i'm gonna copy some demo live demo over here copy an example so this is gonna verify whether our uh, whether our um both css and js works properly so then again refresh restart server obviously while development we would use um, some um, tool to auto refresh our server every time we make a changes here but uh, again for the sake of simplicity i'm just doing this manually so you know what exactly is happening at this very moment let's refresh this one we have this new button here which looks like a bootstrap button and now we can simply click it and we have our model working so that's how you update your mvc asp.net project with the newest bootstrap 5 probably uh, it's just a matter of time once uh, in the newer version um, of um, blazor um, this will be also a default option but i can imagine that for some period of time um, before people migrate to bootstrap 5 um, you're gonna uh, need to update it manually uh, so that's it for today i hope you enjoyed uh, i strongly encourage to see and check our other videos so if you go to youtube.com slash md bootstrap you're gonna find other tutorials and a lot of different uh, videos like bootstrap 5 um, crash course uh, you're gonna find some interesting javascript and css tricks um, and a lot of different playlists we are releasing two uh, three videos weekly so uh, i strongly encourage you to check our other videos uh, and hit the subscribe button um, turn notification on if you don't want to miss more videos like that and i also encourage you to join our facebook group uh, you're gonna find the link to the description uh, down below uh, so thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed if you did please don't forget to leave a like please don't forget to leave a comment if something wasn't clear please leave, let me know in the comments down below this video and uh, if something doesn't work if something if you need any help please do not hesitate to post it uh, as a comment or join our facebook group where you can ask anything related to web development and our web development team will be happy to help you with that thank you for watching and see you in the next video Oh, 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 oh,